Hey, welcome back guys. All right, so, so far we have a functioning cut. It's only that it doesn't give us the grand total because if I go back to my products here and add one more item here, so I have two items here, I need to be able to see the actual total down here or at the least I should see it in here. But these values are too small here, so maybe we need just one uh, big one here just for the user to see the total before they decide to click checkout. Okay, so let's see how we can make that happen. Okay, so let me come back here to the text editor and let's go to views, app views, uh, eShop cart.php and I want to look for some text that's here uh, for example the subtotal here so cart subtotal so let's search for that there we go so cart subtotal is right here so for now the tax let's put it at zero we just want to have a system that's working for now and then we can go back and refine uh, the items that we want to add so first we get it working and then we can go back and start adding things like shipping cost, tax and so on and so forth. So I'll put zero on tax and for now let me put zero here and zero there. Like that. Okay, so now what we need is an actual total. So also we're going to see how we can ask the user to select a country and the region and so on and so forth okay so in the um this is where we're doing our for each loop here once we get the rows so this is one row another row and so on so while the cart is uh, looping through the rows like this what we can do is we can grab the totals and then we can save them to an array okay so right here what i want to do is create some php tags like so so i would want us to calculate the um the total that we are getting down here but Keep in mind, this is very tempting to do here because it's just a simple thing and you can do it right here. But in keeping with the model view controller system, we are not supposed to do any of that logic in here. So instead, we have to go to our controller and do it from there. So cart.php, the controller, and then let's come right here. So we are already looping through all the rows right here. Like for example, when we are uh, creating thumbnails and the like. So we can use this opportunity to create some kind of total. So what I will do here is I will just say this. I'll say data, I will say total. Maybe let me name it grand underscore Actually, it's a subtotal there because even though there's no shipping and do that, but let's just say subtotal for now. So I'll say this is equal to zero. So I'll set it to zero for now. And then all I need to do is once we are looping here, I can just uh, multiply the values and add to it. So. So I can do it here, even here I'm still going through the loop, but it's better to loop through the rows themselves. Okay. So in the row here, um, let me come back to cart for a minute here and see what columns we are using here. So we have the ID, we have the price, and we have the cart quantity. So this is the one I'm looking for, the card quantity and the price. This is what gives us the total here, okay? So price and quantity. So let's come back here and do exactly that. So 
I will copy this part here. Mm -hmm. So the grand the subtotal is here, and then here what I will do is row. Uh, this is this is not a problem. We can use this row here instead of doing it this way Because we are not actually writing to the main rows We just want to write to a new variable here so we can use the values that are here So in this case row price multiplied by row quantity Actually makes sense. So here I would just say um, My total just a temporarily uh, a variable here so my total is that so then what I will do is I will say because now I've gotten the total of this one quantity and price and then I want to add it to this so I'll copy this and put it here and say plus equals and then put my total there so data subtotal so since it's already set to subtotal in the data here, there's no need to do this or add it because we're adding it directly. So if I come to my other side, all I need to do is read from subtotal. So let's go back to where we had uh, subtotal right here. And we're going to do likewise. And echo, let me put the dollar sign there and close it like that okay so let's do a refresh and you can see now that we have forty dollars ninety seven so let's see here if we add a um, nine plus zero that's a nine here one two that's uh, three plus the other one four okay so it's uh, correct here it's adding properly that makes sense and then the total here, because we're not adding any other extra fees, we're going to just repeat. And now if you want it to show, uh, let's say the total becomes in the thousands, for example. So let me just exaggerate it a little bit in the cart here. So I'm just going to say times that and then times a thousand, for example, just to make the numbers uh, quite big. So as you can see now, the numbers are in the thousands, but we want that comma there. So to do that, we just use the number format. So we say number format like that. Like this. So once you do number format, uh, you get that comma there, as you can see. Now, if you want to have two decimal places just in case you can put a comma and put two there that would tell it that it should round off to two decimal places at most so there we go so we have the dot zero zero and so on so if i now remove the 1000 from here i can get the actual value which is that okay so pretty good now exactly what we've done here i will copy and paste it on the total itself. All right. Very, very good. Now, keep in mind that once we click on checkout, we have to be able to send this data to... Oh, actually, we don't need to send that data, except if we had the tax and we had the shipping and so on. Uh, not calculated yet we may want to put that data inside some hidden fields but for now I think we can do without that other thing is I want to put the total right here so it's quite big as opposed to here where it is so let's put the subtotal here so in order to do that let's come uh, to the entire box right here which where is the ending here T body table div okay so we're just going to try some text here and see where that pops up so it pops up there so maybe we can do a little bit better 
just after the table okay now after the table is inside that place so maybe not such a good idea so i will put it right here i'll just say uh, div so let's add a class of pool right so we can float to the right and then let me say uh, sub total subtotal like this and then i will paste the subtotal like that okay so refresh and there we go subtotal now the advantage here is we are in control of the styling so let's say style uh, font size 20 pixels okay maybe too small let's try uh, 30 pixels okay subtotal so it's entirely up to you here uh, this is HTML so it's very easy to style just style it to your liking and uh, you'll be golden let me see what happens if I move it a step up to here yeah I think that looks more reasonable so subtotal and then we obviously forgot the dollar sign here oh wait a minute wrong place it should be here there you go so subtotal so let's add to this uh, let me add one more okay so you see there it has uh, increased it's showing that everything works well it has increased there and there as well awesomeness yes so now what we need is to be able to check out and have the user enter some personal details like uh, the name and so on so if you notice here the user is able i'm not logged in here so the user is able to start shopping without actually uh, logging in so we have to fix that so that the user actually logs in that, that way we don't need to get so much information from the user before we tell them to check out all right uh, we'll see you and also the advantage of uh, uh, having them log in is because they can later on come back and check what they ordered last time Okay, so I'll see you in the next video where we do just that.